Back in chapter 1, you learned that there are two types of variable that can be used to store other variables. One of them was the list type, and you've seen lots of examples of working with lists so far in the course. The second type of variable that can store other variables is called an environment, and that's the focus of this video. To create a new environment, you call the new.n function. Unlike lists, where it's common to fill them with elements when you create them, environments are always created empty, and you add their contents afterwards. The syntax for adding variables to an environment is the same as for a list. For example, you can use the dollar operator or the double square brackets operator. Let's check that the contents of the list and the environment are the same. The print method for environments isn't very informative, so it's best to use ls.str, which gives the structure of each element. There's one way that environments behave differently from lists that becomes important when working with R6 classes. Take a copy of the list, then change one of the elements. Here you can change the x element from pi to the power of 1 to 5 to e to the power of 1 to 5. Now look at the corresponding x element in the second list. The changes, of course, haven't been passed along to the copy, so the lists are no longer identical. Let's do the same thing with environments. Take a copy of the environment, change the x element in the first environment, and see what happens to the corresponding element in the second environment. Recall that in the case of lists, the change wasn't transferred to the second list. However, with environments, the change has been transferred over. Both x elements remain identical. Most R variables use a copying strategy known as copy by value. That is, when you copy a variable, each version of the variable has its own copies of the values. By contrast, environments use copy by reference. This means that when you copy them, each version refers to the same copy of the values. R6 classes can take advantage of copying by reference to share data between all instances of a class. There's one simple trick to this, which involves defining a private element, by convention named shared. The shared element takes several lines of code to define, so it needs braces. First, you define a new environment. This can be named anything. Then, you assign any variables that you like inside the environment. In this case, the code assigns the number 123 to a variable named a shared field. Finally, you return the environment. To access the shared fields, you use active bindings, just as you saw in the previous chapter. The syntax is the same, except that this time, the fields are accessed using a private dollar shared dollar prefix. To see how shared fields work, let's create a couple of thing objects. For both of these things, the shared field defaults to the value 1, 2, 3. So far, this is just the same behavior as any other field. But now look what happens when you change the shared fields in one of the objects. Since the field is shared, the copy by reference behavior means that the value is changed in the second thing object as well. In summary, environments are created using the new.n function. You can assign variables to them and access them again using the same syntax as with the lists. The most important difference between lists and environments is that environments use copy by reference behavior, which means that all instances of an environment share the same variables. R6 classes can use this feature to provide variables that are shared across all objects. They do this by defining a private field that is an environment. This field, by convention, is named shared. Now, let's try some examples.